If only one day I could ever own a Kiyoshi Kato Japanese kitchen knife. At least, if one day I could at least use it, just to see what the fuss is all about. What's up guys, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Franco Allo, and this channel is all about knife knowledge, reviews, unboxings, and head-to-heads. Today, a very special episode of Kiyoshi Kato finding its way into this kitchen. Is the knife worth the hype? Who is Kiyoshi Kato? Why should we care? Is it worth the price point? All these questions will be answered today. I can tell you first and foremost that I am absolutely honored that I have had the chance and potential to own momentarily my very own blue number two, 240 millimeter Kiyoshi Kato Gyoto. Now the individual who sent me this knife does not want to be named Rightfully so, they probably don't want to be harassed on the forums or in any groups that they're a part of, but I can thank this person enough. You know who you are for sending me your Kiyoshi Kato. Not only was a Kiyoshi Kato sent to me for a very brief period of time, but I was the first person to actually use the knife. This knife went through a few owners before it found its way into my kitchen, again, just for a few hours, but I put the first cut on this knife, and of course, it's all on video. So. Kiyoshi Kato, who is the smith? What's the story? Why is it that this is one of the most sought after Japanese kitchen knives for? Keyword, collectors. So not necessarily your Japanese kitchen knife amateur cooks or even professional cooks, but really those that don't mind spending the dough for a bit of, as usual, that Japanese romantic story. First, let's take a look at the knife. First and foremost, what you have in front of you, as mentioned, is a 240 millimeter Gyoto from Kiyoshi Kato, made out of blue two or Eogomi two. It has a beautiful magnolia handle and a buffalo horn bolster. The finish or the polish on the knife is just your classic conventional belt grind finish vertical, a little bit like a Kotetsu. Now, the reason most people get into Kiyoshi Kato knives is for the story more than anything else. So, what's the story? Here's the story. Kiyoshi Kato, or as he likes to be referred to as Yoshiaki Fujiwara, which is a smith name, was born in 1944 in the Hokuto Yamanashi Prefecture of Japan. 20 years into his life, essentially, he started swordsmithing and training under his grandfather, Kanekuni Kato, and his father, Sanahira Kato. After more than a decade of training in swordsmithing, he entered the field of knife making, basically outdoor and kitchen knives, and this was roughly in 1977. He makes his knives in his workshop in Hokuto City in Yamanashi Prefecture. Kato-san's knives are one of the most highly sought after pieces amongst Japanese knife collectors. His knives, as you might have guessed, are also considered as, you know, the classic, unicorns, just like Shigafusa knives or even river drums from Tsukasa Hinora. Now, the construction type of this particular knife in hand is going to be carbon clad, which is going to make it very reactive. It's also extremely thick at the heel at roughly 3.6 millimeters and at the handle it's at 4.2 millimeters but does taper to what I would actually consider quite narrow at 1.1 millimeters. Now as for the blade itself as you can see it's really nothing fancy in terms of the construction sure it's in-house welded but really I think the story behind the Kiyoshi Kato is that he is a licensed swordsmith and so that invokes samurai culture when people think about Kiyoshi Kato knives. But the price point, the price point is super important. It is imperative to sometimes deciding, is this worth it? Would I like to own a Ferrari in Edmonton where there are many potholes? Sure. Can I afford it? Nope. If it was given to me, would I enjoy driving it? Probably, but would I maximize this driving potential when I'm really driving at 40 kilometers an hour in the pothole ridden Edmonton streets? Probably not. So with that information, with that being said, we will be getting into the food demos, but the question remains, who's this for? Again, as I kind of alluded to in the intro, I think this really is more for a Japanese knife collector. And you know, the word collector has all kinds of connotations, but in this case, the people I think this is aimed to are people that have money to spend. Because the story is beautiful, because it's romantic, you might be tempted to want to look for this knife. You're not going to find it. There are not many on the market. That's the first thing. That's one of the reasons it really drives the price point of this knife up. 
or I guess let's call it reason two, because reason one is the fact that he's a licensed swordsmith and so there's a demand for his kitchen knives because of the story. Reason two, there's not a lot of his knives and therefore the price point goes up. And the price point, you know, not just going up with time, well, it's pretty much pricier in most honyakis. And so unless you're really well established with your own Japanese knife collection, I would not recommend this as your first Japanese kitchen knife or your second or your third. I'm gonna start recommending this as a knife when you already know you have a problem. When you just have that money to spend, you see a Kiyasho Kato hit the market and you've watched this video or you just know enough yourself to say, this is an opportunity. This is an opportunity to own a Japanese kitchen knife made by a licensed swordsmith. Beautiful story, but how's their performance? Is it worth the money? I swear, every time I think about, is it worth the money? So performance versus value, I think about my Tsukasa Hinora River Jump, one of my favorite knives of all time. I don't think I'll ever sell it, but performance wise, it's not worth the extra dough that I spend for it. There's much better knives like the recently acquired Konosuke Fujiyama FM 210 millimeter Gyoto, which for the price blows me out of the water. So what that means is that I also approached this Kiyoshi Kato that was sent to me with a bit of skepticism. I thought, it's just gonna be another river jump. It's gonna be a pretty knife, but it won't perform that well. I'm not saying that the river jump doesn't perform that well, by the way, there will be a video, hopefully sometime this year about it. But the Kiyoshi Kato, in, ter in terms of, you know, the bells and whistles, it actually doesn't even have that many. Take a look at the polish again. Take a look at the knife. Is it a stunning knife? I don't think so. Is it a plain knife? Yep. Is it simple? Yep. Does it have a story? Yes, we're gonna keep coming back to that. So when I got the knife, was I humbled? Absolutely, because I can't afford one myself. Was I excited to be the first one to hold the knife and put its very first cut? Absolutely. Did I wanna damn make sure that when I was gonna do the video that focus was gonna be on point, that there wasn't gonna be any hiccups? $2,000 and more reasons to say absolutely. And so you're going to see the food demo, and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk about the knife a little bit.
Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I enjoyed using that knife. Because you want to know how I feel about that knife? Ever since it left this house, I can't stop thinking about it. Now I know, it's, it's about the story. But the price point is insane. But you know what else was kind of insane? It's performance. It's wonderful workhorse grind. How it felt in hand for a 240 millimeter. The huge beefy Magnolia octagonal wah handle on a five foot four frame just felt so comfortable in hand. Do I still recommend this knife? If you got the money to spend, go for it because I can tell you that if I had the money to spend, I probably would go for it because there's a reason I keep thinking about this knife ever since it left my possession. It's because it performed better than I expected. It performed really, really well, in fact, not just better than I expected because my expectations were pretty low. Again, I thought a knife at this price point, it's like, what can it do? Well, I can tell you what it can do. Somehow create an emotional connection with me. It just, it, it felt, it felt amazing in all the right places. I don't know how else to say it. I love how reactive it was without necessarily kind of leeching its patina onto the produce that I used in the food demo. I love that I'm still thinking about it, even though I had it for such a short period of time. I didn't want to like this knife. I was just happy to have it. I was happy to be here making a video for you about Kiyashi Kato, about a knife that most of you might never have a chance to get, about a knife that I'm still honored that I got even for just a few hours. So what's my conclusion? My conclusion is that it's 100% overpriced, but it performed well. Did it perform in the 2000 plus dollar mark? No, like that's not equatable. The graph in terms of value and performance, right, as say performance is on the x-axis and cost goes up, well, it, the, the graph kind of does this. It plateaus at some point. So for $2,000, if this was just a data point, it'd be on the plateau section of, well, you're not really getting more for the amount of money that you're spending. But I still think about it. I think it performed really well on even some typically difficult to cut produce like cherry tomatoes. And so that's all I got to say. I can't really tell you a whole lot more. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Again, you know who you are who sent this to me. Thank you. If I can never get my hands on a used Kiyoshi Kato, I probably will just to add it to, keyword, the collection. Because that's what I am. I'm a Japanese kitchen knife collector and collector of also other kitchen knives that aren't just Japanese. But this one spoke to me. I did not want it to speak to me. Trust me, the last thing I want is to think that somewhere down the line, I'm gonna spend $2,000 plus Canadian to buy one kitchen knife when that's the equivalent of even something like uh, six Takedas, which are fantastic performers for the price. And so I'm not comparing Kiyoshi Kato to Takeda, by the way, it's a different story. But the story's romantic and sure, maybe it appeals to me, but what appealed to me the most is the fact that when I'm in the kitchen, which is where I'm at 80% of the time when I'm not at work, it was an absolute joy to use. It cut through, it flew through produce like it was a laser, but it's a workhorse, which made me feel like I didn't have to treat it as delicately as my single bevel knives or my Shirogami one knives like the Fujiwara Maboroshi Santoku, which is just chippy. Even the Denka's chippy. And you all know the Denka Gyoto is my favorite knife. This is the knife that I would use if I needed to do heavy prep. As a home cook, I don't do a whole lot of heavy prep. You know, the most I'm in the kitchen is an hour at a time and I'm literally making a salad because I want really nice, precise cuts. I think you get where this is going. I can talk about this for a really long time, but all I have to say is I'm in love. And so thank you for sending me that Kiyoshi Kato. And um, please feel free to subscribe if you like the content that I put out for you. It's free content, it's high quality. I try to keep it entertaining as usual. Click that subscribe button, it's free. Coming to you from my kitchen. Love you guys as always. Talk to you next time.